Hey guys, back at it out here. Um, in this video, the majority of what you're going to be seeing me do in the background is putting the bottom skins together. So uh, in the previous video, what I had to do was, you know, marry everything up, get everything pre-drilled and get everything all lined up. And then now it's about getting those two bottom skills overlapped correctly and putting all those rivets in. Now we're at a stage where this piece, this one fuselage piece is big and starting to get heavy. I don't know how much it weighs. I mean, you'll see me, I'm lifting it up by myself. Uh, I, if you like picked up the whole thing and put it on my back, I probably could move it, but it would be probably pretty close to the limit of where I would comfortably be wanting to move it. I'm never going to pick it up that way because that's just a sure way to destroy it. But um, at this point, it's going to be a lot of putting those rivets across the bottom. And even with two people, I think it would be incredibly difficult simply because you're going to have to push it up on its side and, <clears throat> you know, have some way to be in there you know, working one side while working on the other side. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a back rivet technology because I do have that long back rivet uh, double offset uh, set. I'm going to get in there and do it that way by putting rivets on the bottom, putting it down onto the back rivet plate and back riveting it and then lifting it up, make sure it's set everything correctly. That's what I'm doing right now. There are a few of them rivet, uh, uh, rivets in there though that just, that will not work. There's something in the way and I cannot use that back rivet set. So I'm gonna have to get out here with somebody else. Uh, so I'm gonna do as many of them as I can in this video with the back rivet way. And then I'll detail those that I can't get to and how I solve them later. Okay, so you just finished watching me put these two parts together what I thought was for the last time. The reason I say for what I thought was the last time is because I realize now I'm going to have to take them apart again. So I had a concern when I started putting the bolts in that this, the holes in the skin weren't lining up. It did take all of the bolts in and tighten down uh, for me to actually line all those holes up again, which is how I final drilled them before. So it makes sense that they line up once I do it again. But at first, when I started putting them all together, they didn't quite line up. And I was like, oh, what I do, I screwed something up, but they're working just fine. Well, what I forgot to do was the, the skin that's on this piece, it overlaps the skin that's on this piece. They kind of go together, sorry, like this. You know, this one being this skin kind of rests up against the bottom of this piece. Well, I forgot to put the bead along that skin that gives that little bit of a cupping upward so that it kind of rests flush against this skin. It's minor. It's one of those situations where if I didn't do it, probably no one will notice, but I'll notice. So with that, I got to pull it all apart again, run that bead just to put it back together again. Um, this is one of those things I say all the time. You're going to do a lot of putting together, taking apart, putting together, taking apart. Don't try to avoid it. There's no avoiding it. So anyways, that's what I'm going to be doing in the next little section is redoing work I've already done. Yeah. <laughs> it's always something. I get people asking me all the time what they can do to help out here. Um, one of the things you guys can do other than the liking and subscribing stuff is share this video. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, share the video, share the channel, share some of my other videos. I mean, I got several. Share them with other people. That way it gets more eyes on it. Um, that sort of thing actually goes a long way to kind of spread the message. Thanks. One of the questions I get uh, fairly frequently is regarding this hanger and whether or not you need a hanger to build your plane in. Now I'm gonna tie that in with another question that I have gotten, which is whether or not I regret moving from my garage to the hanger. Um, so I got lucky with the hanger. I was in the right place at the right time. The owner of this hanger had a person that was in it before me that sold their plane and got out of it and didn't want to make the payments anymore. And I just, I just took over. I literally stepped in and started taking over for it and I got a good deal. Uh, so I was just in the right place, right time. I'm glad I got the hanger because it is certainly handy. I can kind of spread out. But do you need a hanger? No. Um, 
there's story after story of people that built the plane like in their living room, right? Or in their garage. And that's really all you need. Like I have a two and a quarter, it's a weird shaped garage, uh, at home, two and a quarter car garage that I could have built this plane in. It would have been tight, um, but I could have done it all there. And, you know, in some ways that's better. Because, <clears throat> and this goes to the do I regret it, you know, for me to get here, it's a 15 minute drive, 20 minute maybe, depending on track, about 15 minutes, we'll say. For me to go to my garage, it's 30 steps, you know, it's, so it, I think if you, if you keep it local to where you live for as long as possible, you're going to do more work on it because you're just going to be able to nip out there right quick, do some work and go in. Even if you're only going out there to throw a river, even if you're only going out there just to look at it and think about it that is more progress than I can do on some days because of that 20 minute, 15, 20 minute drive. So do I regret uh, moving to the hangar? Sometimes yes, because of that access, but sometimes, I mean, pretty much no, also because it's really handy to have this giant space. Um, so, okay, to sum up, do you need a hanger? No, you don't need a hanger and it does cost money. That's the downside. You know, your hanger, depending on where you are, could be 200 to 500 dollars a month that you're just out of pocket to pay for this space your your various uh, your fees are going to vary depending on where you are um but should you i guess move uh if you have the opportunity sure is nice you know i'll tell you that but do you have to No. you can build in your garage or in your living room for as long as you want and a lot of people do they'll build it entirely in their garage and they only need the hanger really once you put the wings on like once you get to the point where you're going to put the wings on and crank that engine up yeah you're going to want to be at an airport so i hope that answers everyone's questions uh regarding the hanger people talk to, i talk about how hot it is out here and it is it's just bloody hot um <clears throat> this is a really big space Air conditioning this space would be incredibly inefficient. The aluminum that's behind me is, it's just, it's real thin aluminum. And so unless I insulated this entire space thoroughly and then put a big AC in here, it just wouldn't be worth it. Uh, there are there are a couple hangers that have heaters because out in the winter, you know, when it's 20 degrees outside, it's cold in here. Um, and they have these massive, um, space heaters they're not space heaters they're like they're like uh, well i mean space heater but they're like um not propane but uh um kerosene heaters and they're huge i mean they're big they're they're and they they're up in the ceiling and they keep the temperature above they're, they're not designed to heat the whole area like up to 70 degrees or something like that but they just keep it above freezing that's what i as i understand it they're really expensive so I'm fine with my little space heater. That works just fine. AC wise, there's no way. I'll just use a fan and I'll just sweat a lot. It's okay. So at this point, I'm trying to figure out how I'm actively gonna do this. Um, underneath here is the, the overlapping skin that I just talked about. And I've done what I need to do. I went ahead and I, I pulled it all apart and I uh, added my little crimp along the skin and I've got it all assembled back together. I've added these side stiffeners here to give it a good stiffness and I've elevated it up off the table. So it's not actually resting on the table at this point. It's resting on uh, these, these two dollies, uh, uh, horses on either side. Um, and you can see I can kind of rotate it up and down so if something bad happens, if it falls, it's only going to fall, you know, an inch onto the table. But I could conceivably pull this table out. <sighs> I don't know how, even with two people, I'm not sure how you go about riveting this short of, you know, either putting it on its side or, or something else. So I'm trying to ponder the best way to go about this. Um, I've got to do this row of skin rivets first, which, so they're, they're deep down in here, rivet those first, and then do these other ones. Um, but I need to figure out the best path forward. So I'm gonna ponder that for a bit. Now might be a good time for me to look at creating the jig that's gonna hold this sucker. So, hmm, interesting. It's kind of cool though, having it elevated 
like it's not it's not on the table anymore it's being held by the spar so which is that's kind of neat so anyways i'm gonna ponder for a little while not sure what to do hmm ponder ponder So many of you have asked me um, if there is money or if there is a market in building an airplane like this, building a kit such as a Vans aircraft, just with intent to sell. Um, not, let's not talk about legality yet. Let's just talk about the money aspect of it. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. And, and my, my position on this all along has as much fun as that would be. And I think it'd be great fun. I mean, yeah, conceptually, like if you could build a RV-10 for 150 and sell it for 300, even though it takes you a year, that's $150,000 a year, right? Okay. Um, except I don't think there's that much profit in it. I think you're basically going to put a lot more money into the plane than you're going to then. And, and, and at the end, when you sell it, you'll probably break about even. So you're talking about making a couple cents, maybe a couple bucks an hour. I mean, it's just not, I don't think it's a livable wage. And again, you've got this incredible amount of time uh, that you're investing <clears throat> because you're going to do it yourself. Because even if, if you even if you take one employee on, you're going to wipe out your profit. Now, <clears throat> there are many um, builder assist programs out there, uh, but, and we'll talk about them in a minute, that I think that might be the better way to go. But the, the legality is though, and I didn't know this, the just build with intent to sell, it's actually illegal. Um, I'll put a link up here, uh, or at least a, a, a blur, text blurb up there as to the specific FAR that says no, and a link down below as to why it's illegal. But long story short is, it's actually not legal to just build and with intent to sell. Now there's, I've heard people talk about gray areas. Um, I mean, the law is pretty clear. It's not really a gray area, but I mean, the, the, where people, where people come into the gray areas, they'll say, okay, I'll build a plane. I'll fly it for a couple hours and then decide I don't like it and sell it. Well, at that point, you know, what, what's the process there? What, what, I mean, that's not a gray area as much as it's just kind of a weird loophole. Uh, I'm not advocating that. I'm just trying to figure it out. I do know though that there are these builder assist programs and there are a couple builder assist programs out there that you throw money at them, they build your plane. You come out and you throw one rivet or something like that and boom, you've got a plane. That's not legal. Um, <clears throat> you know, you're supposed to build 51% of the plane, you know, so that, so that, so that you can legally sign off on the FAA saying, yes, I built it. Now, I guess technically it's not illegal for them to build your plane where the illegal part comes in is when you sign that piece of paper and you lie saying or perjure yourself saying, yes, I built it, then you are the, the guilty party. Um, but liability has got to be a huge thing. I mean, these, I think it was Epic or something like that, that had a huge liability issue where they were basically building people's planes for them. Um, and long story short, is it a viable thing? No, not really. Uh, is it something that I would love to do? Hell yeah, it'd be fun, you know, but right now the law doesn't apply. It. it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't allow for it. And I just don't think there's any money for it. I don't think there's a market. Um, the, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, I'm building my plane and when I'm done building my plane, I totally want to build another plane. Um, because this is just a great process, but I would have to build it in addition. I would then have two planes because uh, I don't really have any intent to sell this plane. Now, again, down the road, a couple years, maybe something will change. I'll want to sell it. At that point, we'll cross that bridge and try to figure out what the legality is there. Because, you know, if I'm still the person that's certified as the person that could work on this plane, but I sell it to, you know, Bob, uh, Bob's not going to have that certification, right? So he's going to have to go to an AMP or something like that to get it worked on. So anyways, there's the, there you go. I opened up a can of worms when I brought this up. Um, because I, again, at the time I didn't know it was illegal. I had a lot of people coming out of the woodworks saying no. Uh, and I had a number of people sending me really nasty messages, by the way, um, uh, unnecessarily unpleasant, uh, jerks, just jer jerks being, you know, righteous jerks. I, I don't understand why people are that way. One guy threatened to, to, to call my superiors, uh, sending me messages that he was going to call my superiors at, at the, 
department where I work and try to get me in trouble because they couldn't believe that a sheriff deputy was doing illegal activities. And I'm like, I haven't done anything. I'm asking questions. You know, it's literally the job of every American to ask questions about the law so that you're educated about the law. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to violate it. It just means you're trying to figure things out. But eh, long story short, no, don't do it. It's not worth it. But building is fun, so you should build. <sighs> okay, back to it. All right, I am not unhappy uh, with how this came out. So this 12 inch long double offset back rivet tool, handy purchase. Uh, it made getting in here and doing some of this work possible. Well, results wise, I'm pretty, pretty happy. Um, again, I'm having to pick it up a lot, you know, and I've got stuff down at the other end to keep me from losing it or from it sliding off or anything like that. But you can see there are some, these the ones that are the blue painter's tape on it that I just couldn't get to um, just due to the nature of all the things. But, uh, you know, you can see right here, this uh, picture shows you exactly like that. That little channel, that, that stiffener in there keeps me from actively getting to uh, the work to be able to do it. And specifically, you know, it's, it's easy to say that, Hey, this rivet right here, I should be able to get it, but I really can't just do to trying to do it right. Long story short. So yeah, uh, I'm not unhappy with this. I'm going to have to go in and figure out how to get those 20, however many rivets finalized. Um, that's probably going to be a matter of me putting this thing up on its side and actually clamping it on its side in, in its place and having my wife help me, you know, buck and, and use the gun, etc. So anyways, it's at a position now where I can move on, which is, I think, going to be putting the bars in place and, and putting these side uh, stiffeners on. I did put these side stiffeners on out of order from the plans, um, specifically to give it stiffness. These side plates add a tremendous amount of stiffness to this structure and it really made the whole lifting up and putting down thing much easier because without them there would have been nothing here to keep this from just kind of falling apart other than the bolts and so it just added that little extra stiffness so anyways doing that and now we're going to move on to the next step All right, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really appreciate you. If you'll do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button down there, it helps my rankings. Share this video if you get a chance. There are people out there that may want to build a plane and don't really know if it's a thing. So, you know, the more message we get out there, the better. Uh, if you really want to help me, if you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help. Uh, just think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so very much four videos in a month, huh? One a week is what I'm going for. It's tough though. Anyways, see you next time.